This is Community Unity Now, the D Tycoon Show. I am Trudy Leong, administrator of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce. Bill Morton cannot be with us today. Our very special guest is Robin Jablonski, who is the creative director of Project Onward. Welcome, Robin. How thank are you. you? I'm good. How are you? Very, very well. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. So um, please first tell us uh, about your position and about Project Onward. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit of history of how I got started at Project Onward. Mm -hmm. So I was going to school at the Art Institute of Chicago and I was studying art therapy and painting and drawing and just overall liberal arts and taking different classes. And um, I had an opportunity to intern at Project Onward. Mm -hmm. And um, ever since then, I just, you know, I had worked with uh, people with disabilities, mainly uh, 18 and younger, but Project Downward is a organization for adults with developmental disabilities who are artists, mm -hmm. at, uh, developmental disabilities or mental illness, and um, it provides space and materials to artists at no cost to them. So um, what I did was, um, as I went through, through time, I had worked more and more closely with the artists and they asked me to stay on and be a studio facilitator. So we do not teach our artists how to paint or draw or sculpt. Uh, we do facilitate and we do give them input into everything that they do, but mainly it's their artwork. They come in with a portfolio of artwork and um, it's a space for them to create and um, to feel comfortable and um, our facilitators and staff uh, work with people with disabilities and artists as well mm -hmm. in different ways. Yes, when uh, the artists uh, come uh, send their portfolios, uh, is, uh, do you find that uh, most of them are accepted or what? what is the uh, probability? Well, of, uh, what we're looking for is artists who have a want to make and have a um, innate talent to produce artwork and um, the drive to keep changing and progressing with their art as time goes by. Uh, we started out, a little bit of our history is that we started out as a program through After School Matters in the Chicago Cultural Center downtown and as our artists were aging out, um, Rob Lentz and Mark Jackson were uh, facilitators with those after School Matters artists at a program called Gallery 37. Mm -hmm. And um, as they aged out, they noticed a lot of the artists who had either a mental illness or developmental disabilities were really progressing with their artwork and had like an ongoing practice and wanted to continue working. And um, sometimes, you know, now there's a lot more um, opportunities out there at art schools for people with disabilities and mental illness, but at the time in 2004, it was a little bit less, um, less, uh, you know, you know, widespread that there was that support. Mm -hmm. So um, they continued to work with the artists, and um, as time grew, there were about 12 artists. And as time grew on, art therapists and schools and Gallery 37 would recommend other artists who had a disability or mental illness to the program. And it grew to about maybe 35. And then in 2013, we decided to dissolve our um, program from the city and become a nonprofit and work independently in the Bridgeport Art Center, where we are today. So uh, in other words, uh before 2013, you were a city agency. Yes, we were part of um, the Cultural Center, Department of Cultural Affairs and mm -hmm. Special Events in Chicago. And uh, do you know if uh, the Cultural Center now, do they uh, uh, refer any any artists that, that they um, might uh, uh, start collaborating with and uh, to Project Onward? We have collaborated with them. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually been um, working with them on grants. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our artists, Fernando Ramirez, is now the the artist for Back of the Arts. He represents Back of the Arts through a, the uh, citywide grant from D Case. Mm -hmm. So um, he's he has on 47th and Ashland. He has portraits of people from Back of the Arts on oh. um, the street lamps going back and forth wow. through the streets. Mm -hmm. And then we have another grant that's going to be coming up in Bronzeville with two of our artists, Ricky Willis and uh, Kenny Williams. Uh, it's a neighborhood access program grant. 
Yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, such as for the art by Fernando, uh, did you ever like uh, take people on the tour just to introduce them to? Uh, so Fernando did have uh, a disability too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All of our artists mm -hmm. have either a mental illness or a developmental disability, mm -hmm. but we do not. Um, we do not let people know unless our artists are open about it and mm -hmm. talking about it. Otherwise, yes. you know, they can. People just know that yes, they're neuro, what we like to call neurodivergent yes. now. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a disability or they have a mental illness, but they are artists first through yes. our program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, uh, that uh, it would be so great to have people go on tour and see those uh, uh, paintings on the on the street lamps, right? The, yeah, yes. yeah. So if you are find yourself um, in back of the yards, going down Forty Seventh or Ashland, you can see them on the street lamps and they're um, about two and a half feet long but are, are, they're about two and a half feet by three feet mm -hmm. so are they, yeah are they weather resistant are they like mm -hmm. metal metal work oh. uh they're not metal they're um like a canvas material mm -hmm. vinyl canvas material mm -hmm. yeah yes when you uh when the artists uh, come to you um how 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 do they progress uh, what is the usual path of progression as they work with the project onward? Well, actually, it's it's individually different for each artist. Mm -hmm. So um, some of our artists, well, they will come in. If you wanted to be part of the program, number one, you have to be an artist, a practicing artist. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter if you're self-taught or if you've taken classes. Either one works for us as long as you're practicing in practice and you're enthusiastic and you want to make art and we see a bit of talent in your work. Um, so there's a three month trial period once the artists, we decide if they want their work is good a fit for the program and they can work well with the other artists who are already there because our artists who are working with us are very important. What do you mean by it fits with the program? What what fits it? What doesn't fit? So uh, what doesn't fit is the, uh, okay, so if there is an artist who is a practicing artist and um, we, we, don't see them um, progressing in with their work. We don't see that. We see that we're stuck, and they're not willing to grow as an artist. That mm -hmm. would be one shut off. Or if they're not functioning in a way that they can work in a community, like we are a community as well. An artist community. Correct. Yes. Do you provide any? Uh, does Project Onward provide any uh, therapist or social worker to? to help the artist uh, to just see if there's any way to retain that artist. So we have previously in the past at one time for about a period of two and a half years had a service coordinator on staff. Mm -hmm. And then um, for a while we didn't. And now again, we have our new service coordinator who is a licensed clinician and can help the artists with some of their issues or steer them to the right therapist or um, social service that they need. And we're really lucky and happy that we just hired someone for that. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, artists uh, work with Project Onward, uh, what are uh, some of the hiccups that arise? Some of the hiccups, oh. Well, um, you know, it's a community with um, about almost 50 artists. Mm -hmm. So 50 people all together, you know, there's going to be hiccups. And um, so there, a lot of our artists are um have some you know sensory issues so sometimes noise is an issue for some of our artists or um you know sometimes you know artists have issues with some of them wanting things very organized some aren't so organized so that's what the facilitators are there to um help them do to help them organize help them get along i mean most of our artists actually are extremely supportive of each other and are each other's cheerleaders which is really great to see what are the hours like uh, when the artists come into the uh, project downward to uh, the space the artist space to work so our artists um they they can come in between um wednesday through saturday from 11 to 5 but um, a lot of them have a different schedules. Some of them are working part-time. Some of our artists are even working full-time. Mm -hmm. And then wow. some of them are in the program four days a week. Mm -hmm. So it all varies. It's, it's, we work with their schedule to accommodate them. When you say that uh, you'll help the artists uh, sell their work, how do you uh, go about that? Well, um, 
what we do is we we have a gallery. Mm-hmm. We have an in-studio gallery, and a lot of times we have uh, monthly or bi-monthly exhibitions, mm-hmm. and we have an in-house store um, and an online store as well. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we um, decide which pieces are the strongest for our artists mm-hmm. and what they can approve upon. And the pieces that are the strongest, you know, we will price them out at a cost that is fair to the artists because. goes back to the artist in a paycheck, 50% goes back into the program. Mm -hmm. So um, that's our first goal is to make sure that the artists get paid for the work that they do and they get paid in a way that is fair because um, they're professional artists. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, when the artists uh, come to you, uh, have they been working years or years or are there some that uh, have not been uh, artists for that long of a time it's all different it's oh. uh every you know some artists have been working for a couple of years some mm-hmm. have been working for many years on their own mm-hmm. um some have uh worked at it for a while stopped and then got oh. some help and you know either been in some therapeutic artist program or um have gotten involved in uh, other programs like thresholds is a place that we mm-hmm. work with that's a mental health um program where they, you know, they do um, housing, they do different programs, and sometimes they have art therapists there, and our art therapists there have um, recommended their artists to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, when uh, the artists, uh, uh, you know, they're referred, how, how are they usually uh, to get referred? Do they, uh, uh, do they know about it? How do they know about it? How, how do they get referred into Project Downward? Yeah, so um, usually, you know, sometimes it's shows like this um or you know we'll get a little spot on um another network as well and you know people will hear well i think i'm an artist and i can you know i have a disability or i have a mental illness and you know art i have a practice of art and you know i i would like to maybe see if i could sell some of my work Mm -hmm. so they decide that way or art therapists will see an innate talent that they've been working with this person or a program like thresholds or sometimes schools like um we have another school vocational schools or you know um transitioning programs for uh, people either on the spectrum or with a disability and they will see a talent. Some of the teachers mm. will see a talent in their student and they'll bring them to us and we'll take a look at their work. Do uh, students uh, get tours of uh, Project Yes, Network? we do. We do give tours. We give a lot of tours to, again, transitional or vocational schools. So or, any, any students, could, any student, not uh, only students with uh, disabilities, they, everybody. No, we would, we, we, we're open to the public. Mm-hmm. Um, all of our open hours, which are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 5. We, we don't have artists there on Tuesdays because it's an administrative day, mm-hmm. but Wednesday through Saturday, you can go meet. Um, we have almost about 30 of our artists working per day, oh. 20 to 30 a day usually. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can come talk with the artists. Most of our artists are very open and they love to talk about their work and their process. How do you decide who is going to have the show at the uh, the the gallery at Project Onward Gallery? Because uh, it's uh, I've seen some of the shows; they're they're wonderful. And oh, then I you. see like uh, other works in progress. Now I know it's the other artists that are are working there as well. Well, um, it's all varied. Again, sometimes we like to do some solo shows, and mm-hmm. we focus on the artists that have themselves a drive to work on specific content like the artist right now we have john banky Mm -hmm. his solo exhibition is up and it's called the glass carnival and it's all these um beautiful like dystopian landscapes that he's created from his uh, visions that he's had in his mind that he's compelled to bring about um and then sometimes we do guide our artists to make work and to we give them a concept and they'll spin off that concept and our artists have their own body of work where they focus on specific things that they are interested in and it will kind of weave it into whatever the um theme of the show is oh so you means that sometimes uh, you offer a concept to all the artists and then see who wants to participate uh, yes in, uh, oh yes. yes so we don't we don't force our artists to do mm-hmm. it if they don't feel like it's something for them at that time then they can wait till the next thing you know and just focus on what they want to do but a lot of times you'll find we find that yeah our artists do want to do those things that are um, loosely related 
mm-hmm. and find a way to put their interest into that theme. What is an example of a concept that, that you've used before? Uh, well, we did, let me think, we'll be back. We did, um, we did a show on um, repeat called Repeat, Repeat, Repeat. Mm. And it was all patterns. And um, like one of our artists does beautiful renditions of like still lives. And he did some beautiful William Morris um wallpaper in his style which was mm-hmm. really nice and then we did um, one of our other artists she does ink and she just did these patterns of ink over and over again and mm-hmm. it was really pretty um, another thing that we did do was a show called the garden party and that was again a lot of florals mm-hmm. and um, a lot of our artists just you know they took their spin on it do you ever uh endeavor to uh, with these themes do you kind of uh, uh, try to induce, introduce your artist to an interesting gardening let's say just to expand the horizon a little bit uh, we 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 encourage that but we don't provide that of to course. our artists mm-hmm. uh, the one thing we did do last year that we were um, or actually this year uh, about in late May is we uh, took the artist bird watching oh. yeah because we are going to do a show um, on birds, hopefully for one of our fundraisers coming up in the future. We don't have a date yet, but we're working on it. And um, so we took the artists out to the Little Red Schoolhouse and they got binoculars and they got to um, hear the bird calls with our instructor mm-hmm. and um, they went on a tour and it was really nice and where's they the were very red, engaged. Yeah, where's the Little Red Birdhouse? The Little Red Schoolhouse, Schoolhouse is, uh, I believe, I, I'm not exactly sure, The it's on F 95th Street. It's one oh. in the Forest Preserve over there, um, mm-hmm. southwest suburbs. Mm-hmm. I think it's Willowbrook, yeah. Oh. Uh, do uh, the artists go on other like uh, field trips to uh, get their uh, artistic juices flowing? Sometimes, yes. Yes, it depends on the artist. Some of our artists... Um, they have specific schedules, uh, mm-hmm. like anyone, you know, people, um, artists or people who are like very schedule orientated. Some, some of our artists do like, will not like to veer off their schedule and they will just come to the studio. Mm-hmm. Some of our artists love to do different field trips with us and they mm-hmm. like to do we, we do museums. We've taken our artists to the MCA, to the Shedd Aquarium to the Art Institute. Um, They do a residency with one of our um, board members and they go to Sheboygan. Some of our artists just came back from Sheboygan and they got to do some workshops and go see the Kohler Art Center and Mm -hmm. the Art Artist Preserve up there. So they get inspired all the time by different things and we're always looking for opportunities for our artists to uh, get involved with the community and connect. How do you see your artists uh, transform, uh, you know, in the program? Uh, a lot of our artists, you know, they will start out, not a lot of them, but some, some of them are very vocal from the beginning, but a lot of our artists in the be- in the start are kind of nervous, um, kind of shy, but you could see while visually they're opening up their you know their body language and Mm -hmm. verbally sometimes not always but sometimes verbally you know they are um flourishing and expanding upon that Mm -hmm. and uh uh, when you uh uh, when the artists uh, are you know uh working together how 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 do new artists come in and then uh, uh how how do the transitions take place well we have our veteran artists are there specific days and then other artists who are just starting out we have a community area with a couple of tables that the artists you know they kind of work together the newer artists or artists who only come on Saturdays that are in school or have a job they have Mm -hmm. a community space and the other artists who have been there for a while work in their own space Um, and we do. We did just start our new ceramics program. We got a grant from the Virginia Gr- Group Foundation, mm-hmm. and um, we got to open our ceramics studio on the fifth floor at the oh. Chicago Ceramic Center in the Bridgeport Art Center. And it's really beautiful. And we've just been really, you know, we have a new um, 
ceramics manager, Liel, and he is doing a great job expanding all of our 3D work for everyone there. So it's, it's you know, we're, this is where a little bit of the teaching comes in for mm -hmm. some of our artists, because either they've had it in the past or they're learning again. Mm -hmm. Yes, and maybe just expanding on whatever skills that they already have. Mm -hmm. What other um, what what are the various mediums that the artists uh, are using at Project Onward? Uh, so we primarily are drawing and painting and ceramics now. Mm -hmm. um, we've just also opened our fibers program, so we're always looking for fibers artists right now. We're very much looking for fibers artists, ceramic artists, and also um, digital art right now Digital is too. yeah so we are looking for um uh, we have a f about four or five artists who have, are starting out in that program it's kind of a sl slower going program but the fibers we have a couple of artists in that too um we want to continue to do new mediums because that's the ever-changing art world Mm -hmm. Well, uh, John Benke's work is kind of more glass work. So how was he able to create glass work at the at the gallery space? He's not, no, he's not doing glass. It's called oh. the Glass Carnival, but they're oh. all drawings. But then he oh. also does have some ceramic pieces, doing ceramic oh. pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them is a stuffed animal. It kind of looks glassy, yeah, but I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's okay. So he's so he's mainly um, he's working in. Um, mixed media and ceramics. Mm -hmm. What about the artists that the... Uh, I wish uh, we could do glass maybe one yeah, day. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what about the artists that uh, are um, that do uh, display their art and they uh, uh, do... do you, are they, do you find the more talkative ones, the more sociable ones, or, or as, they, as they work in Project uh, Onward, they become more sociable and, and do want to uh, um, mingle with the public? Uh, most of our artists, even the artists who are v not nonverbal but don't talk very much, mm -hmm. when the public comes around, they do want to talk about their work. We. Mm -hmm. We most of our artists really are their best self advocate, as any artist I think is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do, you know, talk about the artists, talk about their concepts, talk about the details and the technique and their work. But the artist is the best place to get your information about the work and, and what goes into it. And they love to talk about their own work. And when I was at the Ad Project, I would seem as if there were other artists there too. So I mm -hmm. guess uh, the other artists were also uh, interacting with the public as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so when we do have an open studio, every third Friday, the Bridgeport Art Studio is mm -hmm. open to the public. And um, we have an open studio and different studios are open, Project Downward being one of them. Mm -hmm. And there's some cross-pollination there. The artists come and they check out each other's work and our artists go and check out the other shows that mm -hmm. are going on. Uh -huh. It's really like the, our, we have this community of Project we, Onward, yeah, and then there's are, this bigger community. Yeah, we are kind of out of time, but uh, could you give us information, uh, the public information about how they could uh, tour the space and, uh, and enjoy the shows and enjoy those, the work of the artists? Sure. So um, you can go to the uh, Bridgeport Art Center. We're on the fourth floor, Project Onward, and uh, we're open from 11 to 5, Tuesday through Saturday. And uh, every third Friday, we're open from 6 to 9 as well. And we're located at 1200 West 35th Street in Chicago. Thank you so much for joining us, Robin Jablonski of Project Ironwood in Community Unity Now, the D Tycoon Show. I'm Trudy Leung, Administrator of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for watching and see you again next week.